Hey guys, I'm Miranda with REI, and we're going to talk about how to choose climbing ropes. So just to be clear, we're going to talk about dynamic ropes, which are used for climbing, and not static ropes, which are used for hauling gear. So let's talk about how to choose. So the most common types of ropes that you'll come across are single ropes, like these guys here. These are the most widely used and probably the type of rope that you'll be looking for if you're cragging, sport climbing, uh, even multi-pitch or top roping. These are designed to just be used by clipping a single strand of rope into the gear as you go or again setting up a top rope. And you can note single ropes by looking for a circled one on the end cap of the rope. If you're not looking for a single rope and your needs are a little bit more specific, you might be looking for a half rope or a twin rope. So half ropes are designed to be used simultaneously, tied into your harness, but then as you're climbing, you'll alternate clipping the ropes into gear. So that might mean that as you're going up, you'll clip everything on your left side with the blue rope and then everything on your right side with the red rope in this instance. And this will severely decrease the amount of rope drag that you might get on meandering routes if you were to use a single rope. You can note a half rope by looking for a half symbol on the end. Some of the benefits of half ropes are that you, again, decrease the rope drag, but you also have extended rappelling length if you were to tie the two ropes together. And if one of them gets damaged, then you can use the other rope for climbing or rappelling. The last type of rope that you'll find are twin ropes. Twin ropes have all the benefits of half ropes, but you'll actually clip them in at the same time as you're climbing up, so they're better for routes that are straighter and don't have meander as much when you'd want to use a half rope. Again, those are all the different types of ropes, but single ropes are the most common ropes that you'll find when you're climbing. So once you've decided on the type of rope, the next thing to consider is the diameter of the rope. Twin and half ropes will come in diameters ranging from seven to nine millimeters, whereas single ropes are gonna come in a wide range from around eight up to 11.5 in terms of millimeters of the diameter of the rope. Now, the most common being between like nine five and 10 two for a single rope. So keep in mind that with a thicker diameter rope, you're gonna get something that's more durable and doesn't stretch as much, but is also a little bit heavier. So the thicker the diameter on the rope, the better it's gonna be for things like top roping or projecting a route. The thinner diameter ropes are going to stretch more, but also weigh a lot less. So these are really good for on siting uh, or if you're doing multi-pitch climbing where you really wanna prioritize low weight over durability. Thicker ropes, again, are going to be more durable. So if what you're looking for is something that you can set up top ropes on, we'd recommend going with a thicker diameter of rope. Ropes come in a range of lengths, anywhere from 30 meters up to 80 meters, with the most common being 60 or 70 meter ropes. When you're picking a rope, you wanna make sure the rope is long enough to go from the ground up to the top of the pitch and then back down again. And this is just so that you can lower or rappel on a full length of rope. 60 meters generally cuts it for most pitches or most routes, but 70 meters gives you a little bit of extra cushion space. If you're looking for a rope for your gym, you can get generally a 30 meter or a 40 meter rope. Just check with your gym to see how tall their walls are and make sure you're getting a rope that will work for that. So once you've decided on the type, the diameter, and the length of your rope, there are a couple other features that you can consider. Almost all ropes are gonna have a middle marker like this rope here, which just marks the mid mark on the rope so that you know you'll have enough to lower or rappel but then some ropes will have a bi-pattern or a bi-color sheath like this one. So this is a bi-pattern rope, meaning you have one pattern on the sheath on one half and a different pattern on the other half. This makes it a lot easier to see the midpoint on the rope, but it is gonna add a little bit of cost. Another common feature you'll come across is dry treatment on the ropes. So dry treated ropes will help repel moisture and dirt. And if you're gonna be climbing in damp conditions such as mountaineering or alpine climbing, you might wanna consider a dry treatment. Uh, one thing to consider is that ropes are not as strong when they get wet. So dry treatment helps with that as well. These are just two common features. There are a whole variety to choose from, but they're always gonna add a little bit of cost. One more thing I wanna mention are UIAA falls. So when you're purchasing a rope, you'll see a rating on there for how many UIAA falls the rope can take before it needs to be retired. Single ropes need to be rated to accept at least five UIAA falls, but this doesn't mean that you can only fall on this rope five times. These falls are massive falls that they're rating. The type of fall that if you were to take it, you'd probably be done climbing for the day. So keep that in mind when you're choosing a rope. We're not gonna get too deep into the UIAA rating system, but just know that that number does not mean that the rope needs to be done after you take that number of falls. That's it for how to choose ropes. If you have any other questions, check out our other climbing videos. And as always, come in and talk to the experts at your local REI. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe, and we'll see you at the crag.